So I've been on a hunt for a 5G stock and I've been trying to find a company that is uniquely positioned to make tons of money from this 5G rollout and that has led me to Crown Castle. I think I still have some war paint on me. And I am so torn about this stock because the macro story and tailwind behind this company is amazing except they haven't really convinced the marketplace that they're going to succeed. And so it's not baked into the stock price and there lies the opportunity, but it's also got its own set of risks also. So what I'm going to do is present both sides of the thesis to you. And so what's driving the macro thesis is, you know, as we increase our wireless data consumption, year over year with ever more increasing devices, um, we're starting to hit the, the limits of the 4G infrastructure. And so um, even though 4G was really just focused on data throughput, 5G really promises uh, an increase in data throughput uh, while lowering latency, and it's promising more capacity, more density. Um, and in order to do this, you have to you know, build more infrastructure and you have to utilize more spectrum. This is the EM spectrum. It's got lower frequency waves on the left, uh, visible colors that we see in the middle, and then all the way to the right are X-rays and gamma rays. And the higher the frequency, the more energy it contains, uh, which is why you don't want to be exposed to X-rays all too often. Most of our wireless devices operate between 400 megahertz to six gigahertz. Um, and so this includes AM, FM radios, uh, your satellites, um, the Wi-Fi that's in your home, 3G, 4G, and soon a little bit of 5G. Uh, and this range is often called sub six. 5G is going to utilize a new range from 24 gigahertz to 50 gigahertz, uh, which part of this is called the millimeter wave. The problem is, the higher the frequency, the shorter the distance it can travel, and it becomes less capable of penetrating through objects like buildings and trees. Now what's fortunate is that the higher the frequency, the smaller the antenna and radio is required. So to deploy 5G everywhere, we would have to build mini cell towers everywhere. And just like the macro cell towers, what's going to connect all of these small cells together are the fiber optic cables underground. And this is where Crown Castle comes in. They're a cell tower company and they're among one of the big three. Uh, the other two being American Tower and SBA. So here's the 10 year stock chart for all three companies. And you'll see that Crown Castle is actually really underperforming. And since SBA is a relatively smaller company, um, it kind of makes sense that it's growing much faster. But for American Tower and Crown Castle, they're both very mature companies. And so you'll kind of notice that starting in 2017, um, that's where the divergence between the stock prices really begin. You see, American Tower saw that they had this great domestic business, and so they wanted to just replicate this model internationally. So here's how the cell tower business works. They either buy the land or have a very long-term lease on it, and then they build a cell tower on it. And the carriers like Verizon or AT&T rent the space on the towers with long-term leases. So the carriers are the tenants, basically. And the first tenant really yields about 3% return. But the marginal cost to add additional tenants is extremely low. So for the second and third tenant, the yield increases dramatically. So that's the macro tower business, and both of the companies have this. In fact, they each have around 40,000 domestic towers. 
Now, instead of expanding internationally, what Crown Castle was betting on is that small cell deployment in the United States is going to follow the same kind of economics as macro towers. And so in order to prepare for all of this, they've essentially purchased and, and developed about 80,000 miles of underground fiber optics um, in the top 25 metro cities. So going back to this diagram, you can now imagine that the fibers are the towers and the small cells that you connect along the fiber are the tenants. And so the metric is uh, the number of small cell nodes per mile of fiber. And as the carriers densify the 5G networks, they'll need you know more small cells everywhere. And so that's how you're gonna get multiple tenants per fiber mile. So that's the bullish thesis, and it's an amazing story. And as of second quarter of this year, they already have you know, 45,000 small cells online. They got another 25,000 small cells uh, under development. And so together, they already have more small cells than they do macro towers. And even though small cells don't exactly yield the same amount as macro towers, uh, they're comparable. And the important fact is that, it, you know, they both scale exactly the same way. All right, now for the bear case. You know, in order for Crown Castle to have done what they did, they had to purchase a lot of fiber. In fact, they had to purchase about $13 billion worth of fiber. And so that divergence in the stock chart that you saw, um, that's when they actually started acquiring fiber in a very big way. So because these are fixed asset heavy companies, I generally like to look at the return on assets. So let's compare the return on assets between American Towers and Crown Castle. So you can see that Crown Castle's return on assets has really decreased over time um, compared to American Tower. You know, American Tower's return on assets has really held steady throughout the years. Now, part of the reason is that Crown Castle is buying so much fiber at such a fast pace and it keeps diluting the asset base. Um, and so that increase in the nodes per fiber mile that that is part of the story hasn't really played out. In fact, um, the fiber business hasn't really generated any positive cash flow at all. Crown Castle's story holds up if you have the densification of small cells, which I believe will happen, and, and the carriers have to pick Crown Castle to be the one to build the infrastructure. And the problem is that for every major city that you go into, there are already four to five incumbents that are already there with fiber infrastructure laid out. Um, and so unlike the macro tower business, which is kind of an oligopoly, the small cell business is actually very, very competitive. But you have to be careful when you compare the fiber in infrastructure. So for instance, if you compare um, Crown Castle's fiber layout with let's say another company like Zayo versus you know, another company like Unity, you can see that the fiber infrastructure is very, very different. Um, so you really wanna only consider the top players where the infrastructure is ubiquitous. And I think what's even a little bit more worrisome is that you know Verizon has spent the last few years acquiring and building out millions of miles of fiber. Um, and AT&T had to build tons of fiber also as part of the FCC requirement to purchase DirecTV. And so when you know, one or two of your major customers are pretty much saying that they're gonna self-perform instead of, instead of using your, your services, that's kind of a pretty scary thought. All of this has not gone unnoticed in the marketplace. Uh, recently, 
um, there's been a activist shareholder that just took a $1 billion stake in Crown Castle. And I mean the active shareholder. Um, it was Elliot, Elliot Management, led by Paul Singer. And so they're, you know, they've laid out this really wonderful presentation that, that kind of recaps um, some of what I just said. And they basically said that the returns on the acquisitions that Crown Castle have made so far have been completely subpar. And so they're trying to force management to change the way uh, they think about their business. And from what I've seen in the past, um, if you don't do what Elliott Management says, then, you know, they kind of force uh, different issues and um, it can lead to a, a pretty drawn out battle. So what do I think about all of this? Um, you know, the, the company's trading at 26 times forward earnings. Um, and that's, that's a pretty expensive and pricey stock for something that you don't really have much clarity on. And so I've, I have a small speculative position, um, really nothing to write home about. Um, but I think I'm just going to have to do more research. And so as, you know, as I dig more things up and gain more clarity, I will, I'll create a follow-up video. Uh, but for now, um, let me know your thoughts because I'm really, really curious. As, as I said, I'm completely torn about this stock. It, it can, it can be such a home run, um, or it can amount to absolutely nothing. So as always, if you find these videos helpful, hit that like and subscribe, tell me your thoughts, and I will see you next time.